My name is Heather Feather. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today we are talking about sacred selfishness. Now, granted, with the 7.9 billion two-leggeds we've got here, there are plenty of two-leggeds that are deeply entranced with some unhealthy selfishness. <laughs> That is a paradigm, that is a situation that's going on. And some of you may have come across these two leggeds that are myopically, narcissistically, overwhelmingly selfish, thinking of the self, putting the self first. It's super important to be in tune to your star player, to be attentive to your star player, to be caring for your star player. But certainly we can get those frequencies out of balance when we are an, a taker and we keep taking, taking, taking someone's attention, their most precious commodity, rather than giving. So I don't want to lose that thread in the fabric of what we're talking about. What I will say, um, if you are a subscri subscriber to Rare Bird Medicine on YouTube, if you follow these videos on Instagram, on Facebook, which is where I post them, then... Uh, more than likely, just due to physics, uh, like energy attracts like energy, you are more than likely not one of those people if you're in my life because I'm a pretty good steward of making sure that's not there. And what I would say is you're, you're probably somebody that tends to put other people first. You tend to be an outward giver. Now, we can have some collective consciousness issues going on in this realm um, you know, a lot of things are not genitalia based, but there is a collective uh, consciousness around the culture of what it means to be a woman. So I, as a female, I'm supposed to understand everything I'm handed. I'm supposed to be nurturing and compassionate and sensitive and, you know, just accept everything I'm handed. And it's like, guess what? No, thanks. <laughs> I got boundaries. <laughs> And I am a balanced masculine and feminine principle. I am a two-spirit. I have well-developed capacity to use logic, cognition, strategy, activation, activity, and boundaries. And I also have a tremendous ability and capacity to receive, to be nurturing, to be a generous listener. And I think that's something that we're all striving towards, is to be in balance with, with all the different slivers of what it means to exist, <laughs> you know? Um, it's important to get work done, but don't become a workaholic. Make sure you play, you know. It's important to be in balance in the giving and receiving each day. So what we're talking about now is being willing to receive the self. Being sacredly selfish means putting the self first. Now, here's the thing about putting the self first. Collectively, culturally, I would say all two-legged, especially in the West, I can't say I wasn't reared uh, in this flesh costume in a different matrix, but what I found here in the States is that there's a lot of conditioning around you shouldn't be selfish. Don't, don't be selfish. Don't, don't think of the self. It's good to be a martyr. <laughs> you know, like, it's, be a martyr. It's like, okay, why do I have to suffer so that others can have? Can we just all have? What is this? What is this thinking? <laughs> Bless it. So, so to each their own, believe what you believe. What I've come in to understand, what, what I've come in to receive and to understand is that I have got to put me first. I have got to be number one on the list of what's got to get done, who I get to be, where I'm going to go today, what I'm up to. Because if I am not number one, if I'm not being a steward of Heather Feather, and I'm not making sure that her needs are met, guess what? Whose job is that? Mine. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> It's not someone else's job to make sure I get rest, to make sure I've had water, to make sure I get dressed, to make sure I have food, to make sure that I have cared for this flesh costume that I am moving through life. I'm the one taking it around. I'm the one like, go over there, go over there, go over there. So, so if I put myself first, if I'm top priority on the list and I'm aware of what feels sacred in my receiving, here and I move more towards what feels sacred and less towards what does not because I'm being sacredly selfish. I'm honoring my temple. I'm honoring my, my mind. I'm honoring my heart. I'm honoring my path to be more aligned with what I seek in life. And so that means that in order to do that, I have to focus up on the vessel that I am literally the steward of making decisions for, on the mind that I am literally the steward of making decisions for, on the heart 
that I am literally the steward of making decisions for. So here, here's the beautiful heart that I am a steward of. And I have found it very difficult. <laughs> I'm a 2911 too, numerologically. I got a lot of two. I can be extremely overly cooperative. Uh, I've had a lot of feedback from a lot of Akashic Records readings through AkashicResources.com. Um, very developed giver. Very developed giver. And a lot of my growth, edge, and evolution learning is around receiving. Really taking in and receiving. Um, I, I almost, it's because it's my nature to give. I almost feel a duty or like I owe humanity something. Um, and, and if I'm constantly pouring water out of my cup... And I'm not being attentive to taking time to fill it back up. <laughs> we might run out of water, you guys. <laughs> you got to replenish. You got to refresh. You got to revitalize. You got to rejuvenate, you know, um, this beautiful prize called me, I. And so sacred selfishness, first of all, to me, is a way to take that... Um, really tightly wound, tightly bound concept that you have to, like this, this collective consciousness, you have to put the self last. Your family comes first, your children come first, your job comes first, you've got to pay rent, ba 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 better pay your taxes. How many bosses, how many bosses are you going to have before the self? You know, I've often said, and my sister says this, and I freaking love it, you're not the boss of me. Let's be clear. And I've said that outside of the room of some bosses I've had, like, newsflash, McFly, you're not the boss of me. Newsflash! <laughs> so, so, I am the boss of me, you are the boss of yourself. And here's the thing, is as the boss, as the chief, as the uh, care, giver, care, taker of this being, it is important that I give myself permission to say no. No. <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that. There's requests coming in from all these different angles in the modern age. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? No. <laughs> right now, I am in the middle of not only expanding a business that I run, I'm in the middle of birthing a quantum, magical, mystical college, which is a huge manifestation. And certainly, as somebody who's always been a giver and has always been a contributor, certainly I want to do that. And there's got to be a point in my life where this star player comes first. Can I give to you? Yes. Whatever, you know, we are all choosing our own value system. We're all choosing what we're going to value. And there becomes a point at which it is sacred to recognize I must value myself first. This is not the time for Heather Feather to be serving other people's visions. She spent a lifetime do that, doing that. You know, serve your own vision, step into your own work, do your own work, generate your own energy. That's what I'm doing, is stepping into my own work, stepping into my destiny, stepping into my life vision, stepping into my intent for me and who I want to be in relationship to the world and what I want to offer before I rot off the bone up in this <laughs> earth school. <laughs> So, so there's a point at which we must become a steward of the self and practice sacred selfishness. So, so I would ask those watching this video, do you ever have a date night with yourself where it's just you and your super cutie patootie frequency where you get to just be with you and reset and calibrate? Do you, how often do you get, uh, treat yourself to massages? caring for your physical temple, getting some of that somatic therapy, pushing out trauma that may remain in the memory of the musculature of your body. How often do you take time to say, I need my attention completely to myself. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I need my undivided attention. I'm not going to extend it into this other thing and other thing. How often do you give yourself permission to say no? Well, they, well, they expect me to be there and they came to my blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, life is full of change and you have the right to change your mind. I mean, this is another part of this paradigm called being sacred selfish that I keep having to learn. I may opt in and I may say something and because I love the truth and because I love the magnitude of my integrity, I always historically have forced myself if I've given my word to show up and be my word. What I'm learning at 45 is that I have the right to change my mind. So. Sometimes a yes becomes a no. 
And you're welcome to get, pardon my French, butthurt about that. <laughs> But it's your decision to get into judgment or negativistic feelings as I be the steward of my sacred temple and how it moves in the world. I don't exist so that I can serve what's out there if I haven't served what's in here first. And how can I really? I've been running on, I've been an empty cupper for a long time. I've been running on this empty cup, like got to serve there, got to serve there. And I've been drained energetically, emotionally, cognitively, physically, spiritually, drained. And certainly as somebody who works with spiritual sight and shamanic seeing, I've had plenty of people cord to my energy, cord to my frequency because they see that I'm a giver and like, oh good, let me let me give you the work to do. Let me let me take your energy to feed my own, you know, nightmare party. No thanks, get away from me. <laughs> Lose my number. Get away from my frequency. Okay? I'm not here to light you up. You're here to light yourself up. You are made of light. You are literally made of energy. So I'm not here to be what you are. You are power in form. You are the power of energy in form. And so I'm not here to calibrate you to be all you came to be and do. So, so I can step into serving, supporting, aiding, being a medicine, um, certainly in this realm, but I'm not going to be able to do it if I'm not at the helm of this sacred ship that is traveling through through this reality tunnel. Like I've, I've got to first make sure I've got to check in with my star player. So are you allowed to say no? Do you say no to people? I mean, I'm getting real clear. No, I've been depressed for three days. I don't, I don't feel like responding to this. <laughs> A lot of people today are just ghosting. They're just like, I'm just not responding to any of my texts or email and fair. I often am like, I am so overwhelmed by social media. I can almost only get myself to respond to it once every two weeks because what I want to do is be reading a book at the foot of a tree. <laughs> I want to be sitting on Pachamama, my sacred mother's belly, you know, and communing with the rocks and the birds and the bees. And part of this world is all of this interaction, all of this attention grabbing. Everything's trying to grab you. Do you want to buy this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to, you want to, I mean, even I, I offer classes. Hey, you want to take a class? You want to learn more about yourself? Hey, you want to get into some sacred selfishness and really learn about you? <laughs> of course, you can go to rearbirdmedicine.com. Click on the classes link if you want to do that. And it is okay to, to say, no, actually, I feel overwhelmed. Newsflash, this just in, I feel overwhelmed. I feel overcommitted. This is what I call a plate clearing practice. I feel overcommitted. I feel like I went to the buffet of life and started just being like, oh, look at all these colors and flavors. And now I have this heaping helping of life and I got too much life going on. Like, I don't even know what that is down there. It's buried on top of all this other stuff. So sometimes we need to clear the plate. Sometimes we need to be sacredly selfish and say, I know this was a yes, but now it's a no. Because I just realized like, whoa, I chose way too much. We're just going to put that right back. No, no, thank you. Bless you. I'm going to wish, I'm going to hold high thoughts for your manifestation, for your creation. But we don't have to always take on and add to when we're in a state of overwhelm. Many are in a state of overwhelm, anxiety, um, just, just processing so much right now. There's greater infiltration of light. There's greater evolution, which always occurs. And that can really stretch like a rubber band, each one of us. And it's important that we take our own hand. It's important that we take our own hand in the stewardship of being who we came to be. Now, I think it's super important, precious, and valuable to be reverent and offering and service-oriented and generous of spirit. And if you're watching me, you little cutie patootie, you're probably a match to my frequency to some degree. And what I would tell you is you're probably an overgiver. And what does an overgiver need to do to get in balance? They need to be sacredly selfish. They get to say no more. They get to set boundaries and be firm with them and clear. This is a boundary. This is the situation. They get to be a steward of the self. They get to care for the self. They get to put the self first. And then with a full cup, we can burst forth into life and help everyone else drink up. You can always subscribe to Rare Bird Medicine on YouTube. I'm always grateful for all of my subscribers out there. Blessed be and take care of thee.